Sri Lanka is facing its worst economic crisis since its independence. But just how did the situation get this bad? There has been economic mismanagement by successive governments, which created a twin deficit, which indicates its national expenditure exceeds its national income and the country does not produce enough tradable goods and services. But the situation got worse due to a range of factors. In November 2019, Gotapaya Rajapaksa announced sweeping tax cuts before the parliamentary election in a few months. And in April 2021, there was the government's push for organic farming, which hit the farm output. On top of all this, the pandemic severely hit the other sources of income, like the tourism sector and the foreign workers' remittances. The credit rating agencies had downgraded Sri Lanka, locking it out of the international capital markets on which it relied to pay its debt obligations. So it started using its foreign reserves for that, which meant there wasn't enough foreign currency to pay for the essential imports, which resulted in the shortages on the ground. Diesel, ne, petrol, gas, ne, 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 Poli mi indela pamana kila da teli bara weno. Ima pasu sa wajat tamai yeni. Mi jati mi ka makarawan na mi ka urut na yiti ngi tiri pat. Jana di pat tamai inna wada meri lat dan ne. Satte ak na kisi diegat. Kana ka yama kana ka tat. Yama ta utas kela lait kiana ma. Hari ma tarahak dukak ngi wedi na wak etu yena ma. Kupila ambuwa tama itu yang istirah tiba nama ke kupila ambuwa tanya patu kerjaan bela di ini. Well, this has become a daily occurrence for millions of Sri Lankans. A short while ago, the power went and it won't come back for several hours. And families across the country are having to contend with these regular power cuts, including Kusumavati, who's had to cook by kerosene light, and they're going to have to have dinner by kerosene light as well. Then there was a kind of a rupial da hak mati was a jiwat, a put in the jiwat, then not down the rupial da mandi. Rupial is in the hak, the hakata got out of the jiwat, then the end. There was a udeta camavilla, the walter munua, the vela canid buma maru in tamai. It is you took then the enemy and take come raja velascola chandia cardiella, when raja pat cardigan get in it. Hopper than thinking and up with the young man to mind up the yard. The sacred city of Kandy in the heart of Sri Lanka gets the busiest during this time of year as people prepare for one of the biggest festivals in the country, the Singhala and Tamil New Year. But the surging prices in the country are dampening this year's preparations. These firecrackers that used to be the best seller every year fail to find any buyers. Things are expensive. Rather than spending their money on firecrackers, people would rather spend it on rice, sugar and essentials. I'm selling these for 80 cents each. People would rather buy a kilo of rice with that money. At a time when Sri Lankans are struggling to meet their daily needs, it is unimaginable to plan anything special. Oh no, it's unbearable. My goodness, I'm paying almost double the price compared to the last year. An acute fuel shortage is causing rolling power cuts lasting up to 10 hours and hurting the tourism industry, the biggest foreign currency earner in the country. Small guest house owners are constantly looking for ways to stay afloat. Earlier we are using this as a decoration. After this crisis started, we started to light these lamps. But unfortunately, we are shortage of uh, kerosene oil. No electricity means no air conditioner, mosquito repeller or refrigerator. It's very expensive these days, all the food items. The prices have gone double and uh, wastage also have gone double. The world-famous Salem tea is also hanging by a thread. 
In a bid to become the world's first entirely organic farming nation last year, the government imposed a sudden ban on fertilizer imports that drastically affected tea production. And now, with the country's limited foreign reserves, fertilizer imports are disrupted. The price was very less, and the fertilizer was subsidized, and you know it was getting at about 1,500 rupees per bag. That's 50 kg. Now, what the information we get from our suppliers is, it's about 15,000 rupees per kg per 50 kg bag. Until these industries suffer, it's hard for Sri Lanka to pull out of the economic turmoil. Angry, frustrated, and desperate. Protesters surround the president's office in Colombo, under the eyes of the police. Sri Lanka is facing its worst economic crisis in decades. All Saturday, the protesters kept coming, most of them young people, in what's reported to be the biggest protest over the crisis to date. They are uh, public servants, so we are here to say that our voices needs to be heard and it needs to be respected and this crisis needs to end now because it has gone up to the limit that where people cannot uh, bear anymore. The crowds came from all of Sri Lanka's diverse communities. This poster reads, give us stolen money back. And this says, corrupt rulers are playing with our future. In recent weeks, the price of essential goods rocketed and cooking gas and fuel became scarce. Power cuts last up to 13 hours. Economists say a massive drop in tourism revenue due to the Easter bombing of 2019 and the pandemic, coupled with a loss of government revenue due to a major pre-election tax cut, are to blame. Now there's not enough foreign currency for the government to buy essentials. That's only one way out of this crisis. The Rajapakshas has to be removed from the positions and then only we can see some sort of a credible political stability in the country and political, with the political stability only, the economic uh, sustainability will come into the country. The government is requesting a bailout from the International Monetary Fund and also seeking financial assistance from India, China and other friendly countries. The government has described demonstrators as extremists, accusing them of being politically manipulated. While a very few may fit this description, a vast majority of the thousands of protesters have turned up voluntarily. They say they want their futures back, and Gotabe Rajapaksa and the government must go. Minel Fernandez, Al Jazeera, Colombo.